Let's take a look at the dissolution of sodium chloride or the process by which the salt sodium chloride dissolves in water. So I want to add some salt to water. So we can see that when the salt goes into the water, the ions start to break apart. We can see that there's a color coding being used in this animation where the pink dots represent sodium ions, which would have a positive one charge, and the larger green dots represent the chloride ions, which have a minus one charge. So when the salt is added to the water, we see that the ions are breaking apart, and we call this process dissolution. At this point, we would say that this is a unsaturated solution of sodium chloride. It's unsaturated because if we add more salt, that added salt is going to go through that process of dissolving. Now each of these individual ions that we see moving around in the water would be surrounded by what we call a shell of hydration. This is where water molecules are going to be surrounding either the chloride ion or the sodium ion. So let's continue to add a little bit more salt until we get to the saturation point. So I'll add some more salt, and let's see if it all dissolves. It does, so we want to continue to add a little bit more salt. So I've not yet reached the saturation point. Now we can see that we've actually reached the saturation point. We're actually just slightly over because we're starting to see some of the ions that were dissolved starting to clump together to form salt crystals. Let's add a bit more salt to make this easier to see. So now what we're seeing is a large salt crystal forming right here. This is different from salt in the dissolved state because now what's happening is there are ionic bonds forming between the positive sodium ions and the negative chloride ions. Now we say that this is a reversible process when salt dissolves in water because there are actually two separate processes going on right now. If we watch the outside edge of the crystal, we can see that there are occasionally ions which are going to leave the crystal and go into the dissolved or the aqueous state. At the same time, there are ions, either sodium or chloride, which were in the dissolved state, which are going to reattach themselves onto the crystal. So we again have two competing processes. The process by which solid sodium chloride will dissolve and go into the aqueous state, and then the reverse process, which is dissolved ions, which are going to uh, transfer back into the solid state and join onto the crystal. Another thing that we can see, which is an important aspect of dynamic equilibrium, is that there's a balance which is being maintained. We can see that the number of dissolved sodium and chloride ions stays relatively constant. We see a bit of fluctuation from 180 to 181 and 182, but the overall average is staying the same over, over time. We also see that the number of bound or ions which are bonded in the solid state, that those values are also going to remain constant over time. What's dynamic about this equilibrium is the fact that individual ions may transfer back and forth from the dissolved state to the solid state and vice versa. If I want to change the balance of how many dissolved and how many bonded ions there are, I can do that by adding additional salt. This would cause for a uh, greater portion of the ions to be bonded together, or we can add water, which would allow for a greater percentage of the ions to go into solution or to dissolve.